lacrosse is known as the new and up and coming sport of the 21st century. Um, Breitbart.com says that this is partially true. Lacrosse is the fastest growing sport of this decade, but it is also the nation's oldest sport. Uh, it also has one of the richest histories out of any sport that I've ever seen. Uh, so I'll be covering a brief history of the sport and the effects that lacrosse has on society. The first thing I'm going to cover is the history. Uh, the Native Americans are the people who created the sport. Um, according to the origins of men's lacrosse on flylacrosse.com, uh, it was originally called stickball because it was played with a stick and a ball, um, and you were not allowed to touch the ball with your hands, so it was called stickball. Uh, it was played in Eastern North America in the New England and Great Lakes area and in Canada. Uh, it was a very major event. Uh, many people would come to watch and um, would play it. Uh, many times there would be 100 to even 100,000 players uh, playing at one time. Uh, and as you, as you can see in this picture, there's probably closer to 100,000 people there. That's the Indian ball game by George Caitlin. Uh, that was from the one of the museums in New York is where that came from. Uh, but the games would last over several days, um, anywhere from a couple hours to even three days. Uh, played over a very large area. The game itself had no boundaries, but the goals were between 100 yards and a few miles apart, uh, depending on the number of players playing. Uh, the game was originally played to toughen up the young warriors. They would um, gather all of the uh, teenagers and young adults and have them play this game in hopes that it would make them more agile and more fit for war. Uh, it was also played for recreation, uh, so just for fun and for gambling purposes. So people would place bets on who they thought would win or who they thought would do the best. Uh, but it was also played for religious re reasons. Um, the gods considered the game to be consoling, so whenever uh, the players would finish playing the game, they should be happy and content with how they did. Uh, and if the players were happy and content, then the gods were also happy. Um, in heaven, or in the Native American heaven, there was no sickness or death, and the Native Americans believed that this was because of lacrosse, because the gods played. Uh, the first organized lacrosse club was created by Dr. William George Beers, who is on the left, and there's Henry Beckett on the right. He is the founder of a hockey company. Um, he, Dr. William George Beers founded the Montreal Lacrosse Club in 1856. By 1860, lacrosse was Canada's, Canada's national game. Uh, many people think that hockey would be considered Canada's national game, but it was actually um, a descendant of lacrosse because people wanted to play lacrosse year-round, but it was too icy, so they just put skates on their feet and skated around and played lacrosse on the ice. And that's where hockey came from. Um, in the mid-1860s, new rules and new modified equipment were created to make the game more fair and enjoyable for other people. Um, these are just some new and old pictures from uh, uh, that lacrosse helmet's from the um, mid-1900s. Uh, this lacrosse stick is from the 1800s. Uh, the gloves are also from the mid-1900s. And then this helmet, this stick, and these gloves are all from 2013. Um, but according to the latest U.S. Lacrosse Annual Survey, over 746,000 people played lacrosse on an organized team in 2013. Um, last year, or in 2012, only uh, under 400,000 um, played on an, uh, on an organized team. So the number almost doubled in one year of players. Um, but as the rules and equipment changed, the strong bond of the team and the willingness of the team to give back to the community stayed the same. Uh, teams stress um, hard work and brotherhood a lot of times. And um, I mean, even my coach 
stressed brotherhood more than the game itself a lot of times, and that really helped 